Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show, and I have been looking so forward to seeing you all this week. I cannot begin to tell you. You are the highlight of my day, and I'm so delighted to be here, and I'm honored that you're here with us as well. So thank you so much. I know you have a lot going on, as we all do right now, but coming together in love, in a safe space, in peace, in harmony, and together just makes all the difference in the world. So thank you so much for being here. This is your show. Remember at all times you can call in, you can Skype with us, you can come into our chat anytime you want. We'd love to have you. So just put your name under the video. The nickname is fine. I don't care if you want to call yourself Mr. X or Miss X, doesn't matter. Come in, share in the um, in our chat. You can ask questions, comment, whatever you like there. And during the show, you can call in to 919-518-9773, and that is into our studio directly. And then also you can come in on Skype voice. Remember, that is not a picture, that is voice. So that would be at computers, that's plural, and then the number 2K voice. So please feel free to share your roller coaster stories. So before we get on with our show, Amnon, how you doing? Doing just fine. How are you doing? You look marvelous. Thank you. I'm sitting in this beautiful office, my my uh, son-in-law's office. I've, I've, I've been rotating around a lot. I've been watching the show. I've been in Florida. Then I was home, which is only down the street. But now I'm at my son-in-law's and my daughter. So I'm in this beautiful office. I got great lights and a big chair. So if you see me kind of disappear, it's because I'm in his chair. I'm not in mine. But anyway, it's all good. Yeah, and when you when you have a moment and Howie is talking, yeah, I'd like for you to stand up, turn around, and close those blinds behind you. I, well, they're as closed as they can be. Oh, so if you want okay. me to move my spot, right. uh, I no, 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 no. Never okay. mind. Keep going. Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about the roller coaster ride that a lot of us are on right now, for one reason or another. And we're going to talk about the roller coaster ride. We're going to talk about how to get off the roller coaster maybe you know that roller coaster is going up it's going down we have all kinds of feelings we have all times all kinds of experiences that's what makes a roller coaster and you know it sometimes the ride is fun but a lot of times it is not fun so let me introduce my guest to you today howie sheriff my dear friend howie how are you well we're on a nice pause on the dips at, for the moment being on the show it's been an interesting day uh some good constructive things and also some emotional releases so it's it's an average day at the amusement park it sure is it sure is and it yeah that's a good way to say it and flo flo is such a lovely delightful person. We love Flo. She is brilliant, has lots to share, and she is a beautiful, what you would call human. Flo. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, I would have to echo what Allie's saying as far as a roller coaster throughout the day, within the week, within the month, within the year. How many roller coasters can we be on? But, um, you know, it, 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 it is life and, and it goes on. So let's enjoy the ride. Well, All right, I need, I need to break in. Yeah. Uh, this is, no. Flo, please tilt yes. the monitor towards you so your head goes upper in the shot. This is really bad. That's good for grandma, but not, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, thank you. So before we really get into the to the nuts and bolts of this, I want Flo to tell you who she is and then Howie's going to tell you what he does. So Flo, tell everybody what you do. I am a physical therapist and a, um, a co-owner of Sports and More Physical Therapy. We've been here in Raleigh for going uh, over 18 years now, seeing all kinds of patients and trying to get people um, back to uh, an even higher level of activity and quality of life and when they come to see us. Um, and that has been incredibly challenging, obviously. In the um, I, I'm also, I guess, to, to round out the picture, I am a wife and a mother um, and of three great children um, who are also going through some interesting times because of their stages in life. 
Therefore, it's created interesting stages in our lives as well. Um, so that's who I am. Now, uh, I'm going to go to Howie too, but what we're going to bring these, these stories out because we learn from each of our own experiences. I'm having my, I'm living a story now that wasn't my story before, but because of it being my story now, it's part of my experience that I get to share with other people as well. And that's what, no matter how it is, no matter how painful some of these stories are, we learn from them and then we get to share them and then you get to share yours and together, you know, we can make some peace and come together with them. So that's what we're here to do. So Howie, what about you? Well, I'm uh, a, someone who's lived in North Raleigh for, let's say the last 40 years. And uh, I've been a retiree for the last 12 due to disability. And from that sparked the development of a nonprofit organization that brings uh, accessible yoga, first provincially and now to the world. So it's been an interesting path to be working so hard for a long time provincially and then the feeling that I was creating some sort of impact and lately have been feeling smacked down. Uh, also, I'm a, a son uh, until recently and so I've been dealing with uh, my father who, who just passed away the other week and some of his aging uh, and also my own medical issues. So I'm part-time uh, professional patient and part-time uh, aspiring leader in healing. And, and that's what we're going to touch upon a lot today is no matter what the roller coaster, whatever little piece of healing you can muster up is, is, is really important. And however, you know, you can get that. It's really important. And as you will tell, we're all in this together. So no matter, even though we're all in Raleigh, North Carolina, obviously, everything that we're going to be talking about is good for anybody in the world. And interestingly, when in your life, because I can't tell you in mine, when in your life have we all been faced with a similar scenario, almost day to day? So anywhere in the world, what we're going to tell you, talk about, what you can share with us by calling in is, is universal. That's the point. It's all universal. So with that being said, um, why don't we start, I guess, I mean, with um, Flo, we're going to start, we're going to break some things down, right? We want to talk about how this roller coaster how it affects us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, but not just how it affects us in the bleh, but what we do, what kind of specific things we can do without denying where we are. You can't, we can't deny this stuff. If that's, part, that's part of the problem. We don't want to deny it. We have to embrace it and do something with it. So Flo, you want to start? Yes, I love how you said that. You know, recently in a staff meeting with my employees, um, that realization uh, finally, and I say finally because I think a lot of us kept playing this one day win, if we ever get to, if we just, you know, open up the state or we get the phase, whatever, and we were waiting too long um, for who knows what. And so, you know, I made the statement to my staff, hey, gang, um, the environment is what it is until it is. So let's embrace it. Yeah, let's embrace it and get on with it. Because if we keep waiting for one day when we're all going to be in a lot of trouble. And isn't that true about so many things? Um, you know, if, uh, for example, the things that, that I think about both personally and with our patients, you know, a lot of times they can have um, more than one excuse for not doing, uh, for not exercising or not doing their home exercise program. They have enough excuses as it is, let alone during this time, let's give them some more, right? And that's what we're saying. We've got to eliminate those and just live and move on. Um, one of the things that we have dealt with just very locally and specifically, and I want to uh, give a shout out to Health Tracks, who is the gym that is located right next to us, we, um, you know, whenever the governor is going to speak, we have waited 
with them to hear if he is going to allow gyms to be open legally in, in North Carolina. And each time, um, you know, they, um, each time when the announcement comes that he has not done so, it has been amazing to watch how resilient that they have been in saying, well, okay, we can still do this. We can still offer outdoor um, group fitness programs. So people who need that group motivation can come together. We can, um, you know, we can do things virtually and have classes available. And they actually have been able to open their pool and and divided the pool out so that nobody's too close together and doing things like water exercise programs. And, and you know, so they pr provided some motivation for us as well. And a great example of, okay, we just got to change gears a little bit and, and maybe, you know, change lanes um, and take a little detour, uh, but not stop driving. We got to keep on going. So, right. um, you know, that's one of the things that we've seen with, uh, from the physical perspective with our patients, you know, getting creative and not allowing them or helping them. I don't know that we can not allow them, but we can, you know, try to be motivational for them and being creative in ways to, to pursue um, fitness and exercise and activity that makes sense to them. Um, when certain things that they've been so familiar with are not available to them anymore. Um, so that's, you know, one of, one of the physical, there's lots of other ways too. We talked last time um, about how many, how so many patients now and even more so, maybe even permanently, who knows, are working from home, you know. So continuing to, so at first maybe it was, well, I'll, I'll change my workstation um, for the next month or two. Um, until I get back to work. Well, guess what? Maybe that's not the way it's going to be anymore. Companies have figured out that the, the uh, home environment might be the way of the future. So let's get on with it, and make the adjustments we need to, or be aware, become more aware of our posture and some other things, and not just make it a, just because we have to now, let's make it a permanent modification and awareness. Hello, um, let me ask you a question. Okay. Are you seeing new patients? Are you having an influx of new patients because of all of this stuff? Um, yeah, we are. We're seeing. We're definitely seeing patients uh, because of the work, the home workstations. Mm. We are seeing patients because they've tried new activities that they never tried before. Um, it might be something as simple as riding a bike that they've had in the garage forever and haven't adjusted the the seat correctly, um, you know, things like that. I see that when I'm on the trail walking myself and see, seeing, I want to stop people and say, raise that seat, your knees are going to hurt. So what would you say as an overall kind of message when you are trying new things? Like I, you know, in, when I was in Florida, I started to run a little bit, run, walk. Mm -hmm. I don't run. <laughs> and Sometimes I don't walk. <laughs> so to combine the two was like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah. I'm used to yoga and dancing, but you know, I'm doing yeah. stuff. I, I, so what would you, what's the overall kind of message to send to people physically? I think the overall kind of message is to, um, to, to not shut yourself out of anything, but to be smart in anything and in, in everything. And so what I mean by that is to start gradually to educate yourself. There's certain principles that are true no matter what activity you're talking about, such as, you know, basic warm up, um, starting, on, um, starting on ground level. Even if you ran 20 years ago and you used to run 10 miles and now you say you're going to start again, well, guess what? Things are different now. Let's start on level ground. Um, let's start at a few minutes, just, you know, five minutes, even five minutes is a long time to jog. If you haven't one minute is long enough to jog. If you haven't jogged for a while and cut yourself some slack, it's okay. And gradually improve without issues instead of having to take two steps forward and one step back. All the things that we know are true, you know, moderation, um, you know, use it, listening to your body, being smart. Um, doing some different kinds of things, uh, varieties of, act, of activities, 
maintaining neutral spine. Um, that's something I could go into a little bit more, but that's some, no matter what you're talking about, you should be aware of and using good body mechanics. So this is true whether you're talking about walk jogging, like you're talking about if you haven't done it forever, or even if you're talking about um, working at home and you've not done it forever. So, uh, yeah. So, so Howie. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what would you like to add to what you just said? <laughs> well, uh, Was it was hefty? Uh, you know, I I, I wanted I, to end. I was going to ask you a lot about stretching. Well, all right. So here, here's here here comes the uh, my uh, physically disabled yoga mindset blend. Uh, stretching is nice, but that's not what we really might benefit from most. Stretching is the culmination of using your body as opposed to warming it up so as Flo was saying just the idea of moving in mindful gentle ways is what's going to add to us stretching if your one's not warmed up can lead to injury from the get-go because what's the point of stretching it's it's really uh something to compensate for working and if you and sitting collapsed isn't working it's strain so you've already in strain whereas i would invite if people are sitting to think of how they can gain length where they're seated such as now if how your feet if you put your feet flat on the floor then you can push your tush back and you could stretch your spine that's just as important when you're walking or doing activities. But if you never know where your feet are, how do you know what else is going on? And that's how you can get injured. Uh, I particularly spend a blend of seated, seated times and standing times and just walking around our home, just getting outside and breaking up so that I don't fatigue from computer and my brain is not working well, so I need more sunshine. Uh, I'm walking in woods or I'm looking at my backyard, which is green. So I think getting away from the blue screen and <clears throat> onto a green screen, that's literally nature, not just a synthetic picture. Because uh, a lot of us, including myself, are in a depressive state. And I need sunshine and I need a different view than whatever else is zapping me, which is a lot. Right. So you've had a lot going on in your life and um, going out and being in the in fresh air, even when it's really, really hot, has made a big difference, hasn't it? Yes. And I'll share my father passed away. He was 99 years old uh, a few weeks ago. And it's been a long uh, grieving preparation and development process over the years one can't help but feel some of that and uh and then it, to try to make room for something and it's still much grander than what you could even prepare for uh so therefore the moving around is also to help ground me in in this emotional uh duress yeah, I'm going through um, some stuff and I'm at my daughter's right now because my mother is here and I'm taking care of her here for a week, which I had just recently took care of her for five months. And my daughter has a front porch. I mean, a front, like a front, you know, it's not closed in or anything. You know, it's like goes, it wraps around the house. I can't tell you what a lifesaver. And I've been here since Saturday afternoon. What a lifesaver that has been to me. That one little porch with a wicker little sofa. I mean, I had coffee out there this morning. I sat out there yesterday just gazing on, you know, people walking, trees, the sunshine, 
I mean, a, a spectrum truck was interesting to me. I mean, seriously, <laughs> it was just, I can't even tell you what it was like just mm -hmm. sitting out there. I, and I have, a, you know, I have my phone with, a, with books on it and there's a book I really am trying to read. Put it down, the, the, just, it was captive. It was so much of what I needed, just sitting out there and just allowing myself to be enveloped and hugged with, the, with nature, with the energy of just being outside. And I was in the front of the house, you know, where there's cars and there's stuff but mm -hmm. it made a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's real and, and beautiful in its own way. Yes, so whatever you can grab, we, want, we need to grab a piece of. Um, and I, I, once again, I wanna just, this is, a, this is an honest conversation we're having. I mean, we have honest conversations all the time on the Breaking Free Show. Today is personal and honest and you know, solutions, resources, we're going to talk about everything. So please feel free. If you have a specific thing going on, a need, whether it's a physical or emotional, please call in because we've got, you know, resources here that are happy to give you support. So 919-518-9773, or you can come in our chat and uh, ask the question in there. Just put your name under the video. And once again, you can come in on Skype computers 2k voice uh flo did you want to add anything to what we just said well i was just thinking about how uh much more important it is for me to be able to get outside on the water um that's my solace you know but not only and we're very fortunate that we have a boat and we can do that but i i we were out there yesterday and we didn't think we were going to be able to go out this weekend we had some problems with the boat and 6.15 Saturday evening, we received the call from the, the uh, repair shop and they said, your boat's ready. And I, I couldn't believe, I almost, I mean, I literally jumped up and said to my husband, that means we can go out on the water tomorrow. And I don't know that I've ever been that excited in the past. I've maybe taken it for granted, unfortunately. And then um, being out there yesterday, it was just a beautiful day, but it's not only, and, and the, the statistics show that the boat sails are out the wazoo because people are getting out on the water, that's the one thing it can do. But not only that, I did notice even around the shore, there are places that people have found, and this is out on Falls Lake and there's lots of coves and this, that, and the other, and people have found those that aren't in boats. So fortunately, they are getting out and enjoying nature, thank goodness, you know, and it's just, I don't know, I see it in such a different way than I ever did before, and I'm, I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful we're out there almost as though we're, we're communing, if you will, even though I may not know any of them. Um, when you're out on the water in a boat, everybody waves at everybody because everybody's in a good mood, you know, but um, but even more so this year, it feels like we're thankful that we're out there and we can, um, you know, I want to, I use the word escape, but I use it carefully because, you know, we don't want to have a false sense of, um, I mean, we've always used the water to escape from life itself for a little while, but even more so, but not escape it in a, in a negative way, but just to maybe again, appreciate it even more than before and and even on my walks down the trail i find myself noticing things that i've never noticed on the trail before for the same reason that both of you were talking about the greenness and the i don't know even just how the the, the creek runs along the trail or you know things like that um so maybe i mean in some ways that's really a very positive thing that we are being kind of stopped in our tracks a little bit to to appreciate, um, you know, what we have right there, no matter what. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing what even just coffee. Yeah. Just, you know what? Uh, getting a cup of coffee from the coffee shop a, a couple of mornings. It's 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 a, 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 the word elixir comes to mind. It has been such a. It's become a little ritual, but more than that. It's become an elixir. It's become something that I look forward to, something that's soothing, something that is just me. It's, it's my relationship with my elixir. 
with my coffee. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes I don't, and I'm a, and I like good coffee. And it, and sometimes I'll even drink bad coffee <laughs> and get pleasure out of it because I need it so badly. It's, it's, it's interesting how that has affected me. Coffee. Hmm. Well, I've been a grand consumer for decades. Um, even to the point when I was in dental practice, I was having some after lunch and there were some side effects of too much coffee after lunch. Uh, but it's an interesting thing about coffee in, in that a big part of my career as the director was meeting people and the coffee shops in North Raleigh were my office. We don't have a brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And all of that social engagement squelched. Uh, my anxiety in being in public is unlike I've ever experienced in my life. I don't go to the supermarket. Our son shops for us. And before that, our daughter was shopping for us, had a concern for us. And now I could barely go in a store. Uh, we do curbside pickup for takeout. I can't go, I don't feel comfortable going in a restaurant. So, and because of some of my emotional state and being down and not wanting to eat, coffee is part of my uh, comfort though I do put about 40% almond milk in it and think it's nutritious and then, uh, and nurse that throughout the day. Uh, but it is a comfort food. It, it is, uh, the challenge is I have to drink more water too because of the diuretic uh, and my arthritis. So it's an interesting coffee water, coffee water uh, dance throughout the day. So you know what that leads to. Right. So, so I stay busy by drinking coffee. But you know, I really appreciate your honesty and sharing this because it's nothing. We're not. We're not. I'm not ashamed of how I do. I'm not ashamed that I feel similar feelings as you do. I'm. I'm. It's. It's very scary for me to go into a grocery store. It's. I go in quick and I get out quick wherever I go. I'm scared because I want to be around my 95 year old mother and I don't want to, I don't want to get close to anything that will hurt her. And, you know, I, 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 we, I, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a, I look at myself as a big person, you know, as a, you know, um, pretty whole, but I am still going through my stuff and I, and I don't like these feelings, but I'm going to feel them. I, I'm I'm faced with the fear of of living my normal life as well, and I'm not going to stop living. I'm going I'm I'm digging. I'm finding my coffees. I'm finding my porches. I'm finding my greenery. I'm finding my books. I'm finding people to talk to. You know, uh, whatever I can find that's going to give me more. You know, keep. I know I'm a positive person because I I already know that because if it because it's keeping me grounded i have I, I can i can see it it doesn't mean that i'm not tossing and turning at night some nights and it is it is what it is i'm tossing and turning because i'm i you know there's a lot going on so um i but howie i really appreciate coming from a man in particular and you're being as open to talk as you're opening to talk is helping me talk. And I'm a talker. <laughs> I'm a sharer and I'm a talker. And I'm not afraid to share that I am, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going through my stuff too. So thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, yes. It's, it's, there's degrees of comfort in, in commonality. Because it's not, doesn't relieve any, any of it. Uh, but it's comforting. Uh, yeah, because I'm scared, I'm anxious, you know, it's, and thank goodness for computers and Zoom, uh, just having our organization pivot, mm -hmm. and because I, I'm an action person, uh, when I'm having the energy, that our team has pivoted, and we've taken a provincial thing, and now we're doing international work, 
meeting people from around the country and around the world. And it's thrilling. And it never would have happened without this roller coaster. The roller coaster took us to another dimension, which has been a lifesaver, just having the, you know, this opportunity. Uh, you know, I feel for the people that are zoomed out all day. Uh, but to engage with people has been so refreshing. Even if I've never met them before, they're people who were recommended by other people. Yeah, yeah. So. Doing, uh, the, doing my work has been some of the most important elements of keeping me, uh, uh, keeping me remember who I am and attached to what I am. So that's really a good point, Howie. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So, um, and I want to get back to what you're doing internationally in a minute. But so, Flo, I saw you shaking your head yes a couple of times. Yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, being able to do my work sometimes, well, a lot of times, I'm going to have to tell you through this whole thing, I, through this whole, um, all of 2020 since COVID hit, I have actually had to deal with feelings of guilt because I have been able to come to work every single day. And I've driven through the neighborhood and seen people who were out walking at times where I know they usually would have been going to work. And, and I almost feel like they're looking at me like, you lucky dog, you get to go to work, you know, because we're essential, we're essential healthcare providers. Um, so and I was sitting here thinking about how I don't necessarily feel some of the same feelings that you do, but I have my own set of things that I have to deal with. And, um, and, and, and actually the roller coaster has provided me opportunities that I would not have been able to do either, which is going into the homes of patients. We've expanded our services there and it's been wonderful. I love going into people's homes and working with them one-on-one -on -one in their environments because you, I get to know my patients anyway very well, but when you see their homes, you really get to know them. And that's a roller coaster uh, avenue that I would not have pursued. Um, or, and similarly, even with um, telehealth visits, you get to see a little bit of their, you know, the room that they choose to show you anyway. Um, so, so that's been good too, but, um, I was shaking my head because of just sitting here thinking again about, well, my husband and I were just talking about this the other day about how guilty I feel because he shared with me how depressed he felt, um, similar to what Howie is saying. He's retired and he's like, you know, you don't understand. I go to the grocery store, I'm in and out. I'm, you know, I don't talk to people like I used to. And, and so in a relationship then where one person is much more interactive with the world than the other, then that's created challenges for he and I as well, because I'm not seeing things from his perspective and vice versa. We have to help each other do that um, and not be judgmental, if you will, about, you know, I can't think, well, you shouldn't be feeling that way. I should never tell him how he should feel anyway, right? But you see what I mean? We're coming from different worlds. So, yeah, that's why I was, I was shaking my head about what, how mm -hmm. and, and appreciating and understanding what he was saying and you as well. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm, because now that you bring up the guilt part, I'm feeling that too, because there are times that I am really happy. <laughs> and then I'm like, how can you be happy when I remind myself of other things going on either in my house or right under where I am right now, or in the world, I'm like, how can you be happy? And then I have to like, well, I, I'm like, you know, I go through a whole repertoire of stuff. I come back to it's okay. And I come back to that point of, you know, being not guilty, but it has a taste of guilt involved. You know <laughs> what I mean? This guilt is still kind of like, a, a, a layer of it, kind of a little yuck on my happiness. Yeah. Howie. Oh, it's been interesting just to uh, feel the absence of joy so much and, and to remember, even work to remember uh, a different type of happiness. Uh, 
it's 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 redefining uh, what simple pleasures are, and uh, which is part of that mindfulness quest. But this is really in in the space now of the moment. So even uh, taking up photography more, I've been doing videos and such, and being around the house so much, uh, I'm just very intimate with our garden that is a small garden and the things that are happening around it and how can I uh, derive pleasure from what's right in front of me uh, because I've also been feeling so dark at times that uh, and I have to remind myself this is temporary but to see wow where I used to feel so joyful now I sometimes I just feel so dark and uh, so it's a it's a negotiation even of uh, saying well this is temporary, but it's still painful. Uh, and it's, so it's, it's, there's a lot of wave in there. So I can appreciate how things are laced. Right. You're pretty courageous. I mean, that's courageous. And that takes energy and a good energy to be courageous, I think. I mean, showing up here today. I mean, I was looking forward to it, but there was a part of me was like, oh, what happens if, you know, my mother needs me. You know, what happens if the internet doesn't work in my daughter's house? I mean, I go through that stuff and that's traumatic to me because I take this very, this show very seriously and I want to show up at my best, ready to go. So you showing up today, you know, um, is and, and going out in the garden and doing all that's courageous. Thanks. I mean, yeah, when I was melting down earlier this morning, I was thinking, hmm, am I going to melt down at 10 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it'll be interesting to see how you feel at 201. Well, I'll feel fine because we have a we have a, a, an exciting meeting at 215. Right. So I'm 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 staggering uh, the good things and I'm worse in the morning. Uh, so so this is fine. But you're right about Wanting, wanting to put on a good face and you know i would say that the greatest strain uh and flow to know is in the relationship is how i feel looking crappy around my spouse i mean uh that's a repeated trauma for her too and your, and, your spouse works still yes but she's working from home so uh so we're you know nearby and i'm at the other end of the house now and uh and she's seen clients, uh, and yeah, it's an intermittent dance. I make sure I have to move myself out when I don't feel so good. Uh, so it's an interesting about wanting to look good and yet allowing to not feel good and look good, but and don't want anyone else to see. Th but those are the subtle things that you. Those are those that either can be a trap, or in your case, you are. You are you 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 have an, uh, enough co um, courage, zest, memory of what it was, moments of joy now, whatever, or seconds uh, from the darkness, to be able to care enough for somebody else, to not just put yourself first. Caring well, for somebody else, I'll tell you what, that'll sock it to you. I mean, that makes you kind of, you know, that level that I don't know if it levels you. I don't know what you call it, whether it levels you out or what it does. But that does keep you from when you love somebody. Love, love. What am I talking about? Love. We're talking love. Love. When you love somebody, it keeps you, you know, out of the dark. Keeps you out of the darkness. It keeps you out of, you know. Something, yeah, right. Well, it, it it and it could, but it could also amplify. Let's say when uh, when our parent uh, and that's say or child or spouse is suffering and repeatedly suffering, mm -hmm. and we're a witness to that, then that's there's love there, but that's the vulnerability to to that is oh this is so agonizing and I feel it with you, and then that affect someone else and then there's guilt for invoking that on those near and dear 
So it's an interesting thing about being authentic at times because uh, it can feel punitive. Wow. Right. It's big. What are you going to say, Flo? I want to comment. I was just sitting here thinking about um, how I, I don't currently, I'm very fortunate. My, my mother, who's 89, is very active and not in need of caregiving. But um, I was thinking about the mental strain that I have felt in regards to both um, my children as well as my employees. So I, I want to talk about that a little bit. And I mean, this just happened recently. I have a daughter who graduated from college and is having a hard time finding a job like a lot of people who have graduated recently from college. And um, I feel the need to help her um, you know, be real and be okay about what she feels. This happened just uh, recently, you know, to tell her it's okay to feel down about it. It's okay. Um, and to help her also not allow it to totally consume her, that she's got to stay after it and be willing to um, pursue whatever type of job might be out there, that kind of thing. But how you just mentioned the word authentic and and sometimes similarly with my employees who are dealing with some of them have small children and they or children who are just starting school and their school is going to be online and I hear them talking to their patients and interacting and I just feel for them that they are having to deal with things they've never had to deal with before and so trying to see things from their perspective and understand their frustration and show sympathy and empathy and compassion um, that I, I am relating somewhat to your challenges regarding caregiving. I, I mean, I feel, I feel like I'm facing those challenges with my, my children, my other two in different situations as well. I mean, they're 24, 23 and 20 and they're wondering what the heck has happened to our world, right? Similarly, um, my employees as well, like I said, and in and, and the constant challenge of, okay, are we, are we doing okay? Are we improving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit? Can we bring employees back that we've had to lay off? What's, you know, so that's stressful to everybody. Um, and I have always felt the um, role of being the strong one. <laughs> of being the, uh, the rock, if you will. Um, so that is uh, wearing, as you can imagine. Um, so, you know, understanding, trying to understand your role in a situation you've never been in before is very difficult, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, so I am, I am feeling feelings, I'm feeling feelings deeper than ever before. I am more sensitive, I'm a more sensitive person than ever before. I feel where I might have brushed, brushed something off before, I don't now. So I, I, I certainly am, my being an empath is even more, is, is deeper. Are you, are you having to hold on to the rock more or give it up more? Ooh, tough question. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Because I know for myself, mm -hmm. I have always been the lit. I'm the listener. Mm. Now I'm I'm looking for people to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's softening. That's a. Uh, it's it's not giving up my rockness. <laughs> because I'm the I'm the I'm that person. But now mm -hmm. I'm I'm like, who's got an ear? Who's got a heart? I'm I'm I want to share. And I'm okay with, and I'm okay with not looking like the rock and not sounding like the, the rock and yet it's making me stronger. So what about you? Well, I think my, my listening, I, as you may have said, these words to me has deepened and um, it reverberates more. It's more intentional. I, I think I've always been a good listener as well. And I think that has helped um, me not, may, maybe that's softened my rockness a little bit. <laughs> 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 um, not necessarily, you know, professed as it may be, but more internal. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever it takes. You yeah. know, sometimes we think it's one thing and then it's something else, but who knows? You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm strong and I'm still, I, I am still strong. It's making me a better, you know, better, better me, better version of me. But yeah, rock is an interesting thing to be going through. And then, you know, sometimes we don't want to be that rock. The challenges of vulnerability are um, far and wide <laughs> yeah. and, and necessary. I, 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 I've learned and continue to learn. Especially now. Especially now. And yeah, and I, and I think that's one of the reasons this, I mean, this does challenge all of our, our vulnerability, doesn't I mean, doesn't it? Yes. I'll feel, and, and as Howie said earlier uh, about the commonality of it, uh, even though some would like to say some are more susceptible potentially, we all are vulnerable to it. And we're certainly all vulnerable to the effects of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Apropos to rock, I would, I, I like to think in metaphors. <laughs> um, I have been a rock, uh, and a rock is good on solid ground. Mm. The ground is shaky and more like sand now. It's like a shifting sand, feels like. So that's the substrate. But personally, I don't feel so much of a rock. I feel rocky. Oh, that's good. <laughs> So I am rocky with fissures and cracks. And, and so I'm more uh, vulnerable to shifts in my being. And, and, and the fear is crumbling, right? And, and being, you know, it, without form and capacity, which it feels like sometimes just going from solid to fractured and, and still functioning fractured. Uh, which uh, Flo's been a provider of mine for over a decade, and I've been fracturing for decades, it feels like. Uh, and so it's an interesting, how can I be a rock yet be resilient and, and know that I'm changing shape? Uh, and how can I uh, work with the substrates that are there? Uh, so it's it's being rocky has become part of the terrain as opposed to an island, mm. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, I would, I would have to, I'm going to borrow that. I like that. I'm, I'm rocky too. And I think, you know, I'm rocky too. And these things are, are a big deal. And um, I'm rocky too. So I've actually been sharing yeah. that with cohorts to let them know that I can't perform the way that I've been performing and I seek for them to step up more uh, and admitting being rocky creates a little bit more clarity because mm -hmm. I don't have the, as much tolerance for mm -hmm. other people's situation that isn't helping us. Right. Uh, doesn't mean I'm intolerant. It just affects me more my my rock shakes so uh, so we're almost whew, we're almost out of time but i before we do that so just certain things throwing certain things out there as resources so tolerance being less judgmental of other people right um knowing that even those that i mean everybody is is experiencing things we know that and some very deep things things affect your body that you experience right flow absolutely and to take time to yeah. what take time to address what's right in front of you and and um don't wait don't wait i, I think that's the key don't wait there's no reason to wait um don't run away from it don't hide from it. Uh, and don't expect it not to affect you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Oh, often, often, and I've been doing this for a while because I haven't felt great for a while, is really questioning my thoughts before I express them. Uh, 
because I've been very sensitive to what other people's expressions are. And I would wonder, gee, did it have to be said right then, that way, and et cetera. And I've come to appreciate that in this era, I'm not thinking straight. And to remember, I'm under strain and uh, I might have to be thinking accurately. And whatever I'm thinking, someone else is not thinking. Very few of us are thinking exactly the same way. And how I'm reading something is likely to be different than what's being projected. And I have to practice that a lot because uh, I don't want to misstate too, because I don't want to become the offender. Mm -hmm. But I'm very sensitive to being offended. And, uh, and I say, that's not right. That's not what they meant. Uh, and to give other people uh, do-overs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While, yeah. while feeling hurt at the same time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, so um, Flo, tell everybody where they'll find you. You'll find me at Sports and More Physical Therapy, www.sportsandmorept.com is our website. Um, and we are right here in North Raleigh and in Cary, our Cary location. Um, happy to help people keep moving, no matter what it takes. You don't have to hurt to come see us. You just want to move better. Um, that's what we liked. And, and I just want to say again, please keep moving. Don't let this stop you in your tracks. So you can come to Flo or, you know, Flo or one of Flo's employees will come to you, right? Oh, me. Yeah. I'm the one going. Okay. Yeah. Want to be yeah, clear. But, but we'll work with you. Okay. Perfect. Definitely. And then Howie? Well, we are a virtual organization at this time. Uh, the organization is called You Call This Yoga, Y-O-U, Call This Yoga. Uh, we're a Raleigh-based nonprofit. Some of our current programming is called Summer of Love 2020, nine free classes throughout the week through August, and we'll have more in the September. We also have something called Yoga Fest Online 3, which will be a weekend festival at the end of August. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on Zoom. You can sign up for as many as uh, 19 classes. It's worldwide. It's a diverse and inclusive. It's for different levels of experience. You don't have to have any skill. It's chair-based, some mat-based, meditation, youth. Uh, this is part of our building community uh, as we are looking to have more people participating in our organization. So it's youcallthisyoga.org, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Come see us. Uh, we seek team, but also we seek to be part of your wellness. That was great. Yeah, well, and that was great. Uh, you're, you're both uh, wonderful acts to follow. <laughs> so, uh, Amnon, you have my books. So we have In Just One Afternoon, Listening to the Hearts of Men, then Twins, Millennials, and very, very soon, uh, People Impacted by Opioid Addiction, and then Black Fathers. And I do want to mention on October 9th, um, we're having an opioid summit. It will be virtual. We have an amazing um, slate of speakers. Flow is one of them. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. It's for um, anyone who's impacted by opioid use, whether it's a family member or um, somebody using. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know. You can reach me at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. It's going to be a full day event. It's going to be loving. It's going to be lots of resources, lots of information, and lots of people who um, are there to share from their heart as well. So it'll be October 9th, it'll be full day. Uh, tickets are like 20 bucks now, so it's really reasonable. So please reach out to me. And um, with that, I wanna thank the two of you. I love having the two of you on. I just love how you do, you, how you do you and how you just do whatever we're doing. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's like I, having coffee. It's like having coffee, and I am like really happy now. So thank you. So I'm One not. My books. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh yeah. I love that. Thank you. So I'm not. Thanks so much for everything. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, and everyone out there, have a wonderful week.
uh, if, you know, speak to someone, share, tell somebody how you feel, it really helps. Listen to somebody else, keep moving, uh, stay active, look outside, have coffee, Congrats. right? All of those things. Whatever, whatever you can do that helps you keep going, that's legal and thoughtful. With that, we love you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.